So today we're going to be talking about the OS Geek and limited slip differential for a Porsche 911. Um, a limited slip differential, if you didn't know, actually distributes the torque between the two rear wheels. In a conventional open differential, if one wheel starts spinning, all the power is shifted to that wheel and you have only one tire spinning. Uh, this isn't too good for traction, so for um, a limited slip, the power gets distributed to uh, both rear wheels, even if one wheel is spinning. Um, it also allows for some differential action, but there's resistance through clutches. In the past, limited slip differentials used clutch packs to prevent uh, one wheel from spinning out of control um, and dividing the torque between the two wheels. Uh, this was great. But uh, this kind of setup would sometimes create understeer, especially if the differential was set up uh, really tight. So it would be almost like a spool. So um, you, know, you would never uh, only spin one wheel. Um, to prevent the understeer, you have to have more differential action. One of the things about the OS Geek and differential is it has a couple of things. So when torque is not being applied to it, it uh, does differential action kind of freely and while torque's being applied it locks up more and acts more like a spool. So we can break the differential down into its basic parts. Uh, you have the differential case, you have the back cover for the case, uh, you have the clutch plates as seen here, uh, you have the cone springs which put preload on the clutch plates, uh, you have the pressure ring which has the uh, spider gears here and the differential cross shaft and you have the uh, outer part of the spider gears uh, themselves and let's talk about how all this stuff works so in the differential uh, the ring gear bolts to the case uh, what's good about the OS Geekin case is it's a uh, forging so a forging orients the grain of the metal into the geometry of the part so it's stronger, uh, it can be made thinner. So this is actually pretty light. Like a lot of differentials, this is a big piece of cast iron, but uh, with the OS, it's this nice forging, thin wall, lightweight, less rotating mass. Um, the ring gear bolts to here, and of course the pinion gear engages the ring gear. Uh, pinion gear is attached to your drive shaft, right? So drive shaft spins around, sp spins the ring, ring gear, the ring gear is spinning around. So inside, <clears throat> to translate this into uh, driving force of your car, uh, you have the pressure ring and the clutches and the uh, outer parts of the spider gears. Uh, the axles go in, in these, which goes through holes in the uh, case. So everything spins around like a unit. The differential case uh, has these grooves in it, which you can see here, and they engage the uh, pressure ring and some of the clutches. The pressure ring is in the middle and it gets driven by the differential case. So the spider gears sit in here and engage the pinion gears. And uh, this is where you get your differential action. So when everything's spinning together, it spins together. But you could see like if one wheel breaks loose and starts spinning freely, it just spins. And then that's how you get your peg leg or your one tire fire, um, which we want to avoid. So to prevent that, we have our clutches as shown here. Here's one clutch pack and here's the other clutch pack. So you can see that every other clutch either has uh, tabs or they have internal splines and it's a multi-plate clutch. Um, the, the tabs here engage on the, in the differential case and they're driven by the case. Uh, the spline side goes on your spider gear. So that way Half the clutches are engaged into the case and half are on the spider gear. So as you can see, when the spider gear wants to spin freely, the uh, clutches actually resist that. 
Now the resistance comes from two ways. Uh, one is your cone springs. You have the uh, one on either side of the differential uh, and they put preload on each set of um, clutches. And then the cone spring looks like a big old washer, but when you hold it sideways, you can actually see it looks like a cone. So this puts the preload on the clutch. Um, when you bolt the case together, it flattens out and that puts a given force. Now the OS differential has three different cone springs with three different rates. Uh, this controls your initial breakaway torque. Uh, you have a stiff one, a medium one, and a light one. The stiff one has a lot of um, initial breakaway torque and that's if you want your car to have like a lot of uh, clutch action when you're off the gas and turning in. Now if your car is understeering, you might want to put a lighter, lighter cone spring in uh, to reduce your initial preload. The other way that clamping force is put on the clutches is through the uh, pressure ring. Now the pressure ring <coughs> is like two rings. Like I said before, it's driven by the case of the differential and it contains the pinion gears, which is part of the spider gear assembly. Now when you look, there are these uh, shaped notches in the side of the pressure ring. Uh, these actually um, have a special shape. If you can see, uh, one side of it has a steeper ramp than the other. Um, that's because this is what you call a 1.5 way differential. So it locks up harder when drive torque's going through it. And then when you're cornering uh, off the throttle, it doesn't lock up that hard. Uh, the reason is uh, the spider gear, the uh, shaft for the spider gear is actually like a cam. Um, so you see the shape of the cam inside the notch, inside the uh, window of the pressure ring. Uh, one way, it has a strong wedging force that wants to push the pressure rings apart from each other. And the other way, um, it's kind of like a flatter contour, so the wedging action isn't as strong. So on deceleration, it only locks up halfway. When you put the engine's torque, it locks up a lot harder, hence 1.5 way. Now in an OS diff, you can change different pressure rings, so you have different shape windows, and you can also change the uh, pinion shafts, so you have a different shape cam at the end. So in OS, you can do um, two-way, which means the locking force is equal between braking and acceleration. Uh, this is pretty good for a drift car, for instance. Um, when you get off the gas, the differential locks pretty hard and the back end wants to come around, which is perfect for initiating a drift. Uh, you can do it so it's one way. If it's one way, uh, the windows would be flat on one side and tapered on the other. So under deceleration, there's no wedging action of the clutches at all. And there's 1.5 way like this to where there's some wedging action on deceleration and um, a lot of wedging action on acceleration. So full lock and acceleration, partial lock and deceleration. For road racing and stuff like that, autocross, most people consider a 1.5 way to be the best. So by switching around your parts, uh, you can change the action of your differential. Uh, the other adjustment um, on the pressure ring is there's springs inside of here. And what the springs do is they resist the uh, wedging action of the, um, the cam here and they kind of hold the two sides of the pressure ring together. So what this does is it kind of controls the ramp up of the lock. So if you have really stiff springs in the pressure ring, the, the locking force as you apply more torque comes up more gradually. With a softer spring, you get more locking initially faster. So with the OS, there's three different spring rates for your pressure ring from soft to hard. So you can change the characteristic of how the differential locks up. You know, it's really neat. It gives you a whole lot of adjustability and it's one of the most flexible, easy to set up differentials on the market. I mean, most limited slips, you don't even have any options. You know, like in the old school days, 
uh, we would actually cut out shims and put it behind the pressure ring to increase the preload. Uh, but that's about the only adjustment you would have. With the OS, you got many different ways to adjust it. And you can really change the characteristic of the differential to help your handling. I guess some of the tricks we've done is a lot of uh, limited slip differentials, they chatter and they chirp the tires and they make kind of like different clunking and juddering noises. Uh, some people find this kind of obnoxious. Uh, one of our tricks is we get the clutches and we WPC treat them. Uh, WPC treatment is a Japanese uh, metal surface preparation process. Um, the surface of the clutches are bombarded by a microscopic sized uh, ceramic media at like really high velocities and a dry film lubricant. So that produces a hard uh, lubricious surface. Um, so that improves the wear characteristics of the clutch and it also really makes the clutch quieter and smoother. So you have a limited slip that almost is like an open differential. It's real smooth with no ch chirping, juddering, or clunking noises. A Porsche has a lot of the weight in the back and wider rear tires in front usually. So um, a lot of times on more powerful ones, we might have a more aggressive setup. If it's an older air-cooled one, like maybe this one is, narrower tires, lighter car, uh, less power. Uh, we'll have a less aggressive setup, so maybe a uh, cone spring, one of the softer ones, and uh, stiffer, stiffer um, pressuring springs, and we do a 1.5 way clutch. However, if the owner wants something different, we have a lot of flexibility to really make this differential behave in a lot of different ways. So. Uh, that's kind of how the differential works in a nutshell, and um, we're going to install it in this 911 and see how it works. So if you like this content, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you want to see the written version of this with in-depth, step-by-step things, be sure to go to MotoIQ.com and check us out.